It's a wet one. I'm going to fire up the bug machine. It's on. I basically just got here. I put the roof up straight away and I thought the midges are going to be out because it's warm and it's damp. So the bug machine is being fired up. I haven't got any repellent on me, but we'll see how well this works now today. This is the perfect opportunity. Welcome to the wet, soggy woods. And as you can see from the thumbnail, today's video is all about a cheaper alternative to cutting tools. Now if you follow me, you know I'm a knife maker and I'm a complete knife nut. And I often buy knives, try them out. Some I keep, some I sell. But I am a big fan of Mora knives. And for the money, you just can't beat them. And recently I've had a lot of messages come through from people asking advice about first knife sharpening that kind of thing and my advice for a first knife especially if you've never walked in the woods before is to buy a mora even if you've got plenty of money and you can afford a two three hundred pound custom there's no point starting off with one buy a mora learn to sharpen it then when you're into the hobby enjoy yourself spend a fortune great i do i don't care but I think it's sound advice. Get a mora or two or three because they're cheap enough. Practice your sharpening. Practice all your techniques. Get them down and then you'll know exactly what kind of custom you want. What kind of grind. My grinds are steep. Somebody like Jack Law got a very fine grind. We're all different. Do things a different way. Well, the first knife I'll show you now is the Mora Robust. I highly rate this knife and I actually watched a video last night of Lonnie fan of Bushcraft and Survival who is a cracking guy and well worth watching and he always uses Mora's and he was using this particular one and he knows his stuff. The only thing I've done to this knife is square the spine off and I've sharpened it to a zero because it does come with a micro bevel. They're basically meant as a tough knife smash it through logs you know carpenters use them in Sweden and they're easy to sharpen with a micro bevel but I don't like micro bevels so it's gone but there's nothing wrong with you keeping a micro bevel second one is the 510 and basically that's all I've done to this as well is sharpen it to a zero although this does come with a zero and I've squared the spine off Put a bit of tape on it, because if I put it down, I can see it. No point, you know, really going to town on something like this, because it's about a tenner. Sheath, I've taken the plastic bit off, and I've just got some paracord on there, and some tape, just so I can see it. Axe-wise, now I don't actually have a really cheap axe to show you. But I do have this, and um, this is, I'm sure this, this is the Husqvarna Forest Axe. Now, I have spent a bit of time on this. I've made a nice sheath for it. I've slimmed the handle down, and I've reprofiled the grind. This has now got an almost mirror polished convex on it, where it did have a really rough V-grind. But this thing was sub 50 pound. Now, for an axe that will last you a lifetime if you look after it, I don't think 50 pound is a lot of money. And back or do various axes, but you will find they're a bit heavy and a bit clumbersome. But I thought I'd try this one out. And in previous videos, it's worked just fine. I prefer a heavier head for splitting and for chopping in general. But for the price, 
this is great and if you can get your hands on one Swedish army axe is another good one but they're very difficult to come by these days and they're probably not as cheap as they used to be so always I've got a Baco bow saw which is a 21 inch which I've had for about 20 years like all my videos I'll start off by lighting a fire as seeing as the weather's pretty horrible today I could use all these tools now and spend probably about half an hour to three quarters of an hour prepping wood making feather sticks but I'm a prepared guy and under this tap which usually stays on the floor I have a nice supply of feather sticks and split wood be prepared next fire mentality the only thing I do need to do is make some small splits I'm going to bring my chopping log under the tap and I'm going to use the motor robust split some down then I'm going to light the fire one thing about lighting a fire in the rain when it's raining the pressure is low don't even think about lighting a small fire and trying to feed it you want to light a big fire quick because it will not draw like if you've got high pressure on a nice day on a nice day with high pressure it'll draw today wet damp it'll sort of sit down and uh, the smoke will sort of sit so you need a good old flame get that going quick all the kindling off the trees is wet because it's rained since midnight last night so I need to split some wood now I've just gone through a knot with this and I've got no damage at all really picked a shit piece of wood here I have my pile of split wood took about 10 minutes and the pieces were rather naughty and to be honest with you the wood in the pile here that was quite big was meant to go on in one piece not to be split because there was knots in it my fault should have just gone and sawn another piece but they're done now that lot with a good few feather sticks and some larger splits will light my fire no problem I've got the remnants of the last fire which was a star fire 
I'm not going to light the star fire today because it's on the ground and as I said earlier low pressure doesn't help so I'm basically going to eat through quite a bit of my wood today because I'm going to need to keep the flames up to keep the smoke from basically choking me out well I'm going to arrange this in such a way now that I've got a nice base off the ground before I light it ferro rods I'm going to light this fire with a ferro rod most of the time I light the fire with a ferro rod don't scrimp on a ferro rod don't buy one of them cheap shit Chinese ones which are as hard as hell I've got a small light my fire here and these are cheaper than the army model but to be honest with you when you're starting off you're going to make a lot of sparks so I wouldn't suggest buying one of these I'd suggest buying something a bit chunky which isn't crap I got a bushcraft store XL one year it's not the best ferro rod in the world but be a good place to start because you've got a lot of life in that one I suggest one of them or something similar just not crap do your homework and say do not buy the hard Chinese anything that's under five pound is going to be crap don't touch it I'm not going to use this one I'm going to use the little light my fire because I've got some nice feather sticks now it has stopped raining but it's dripping off the trees well I'm going to do this as quick as I can I'm not going to mess about because if it does downpour again I don't want my wood getting wet or my camera for that matter I've got five decent feather sticks and I've still got another five under there in case things fail always have extra don't put all your eggs in one basket I know some people say oh use them all you've got more chance but seeing as I got plenty and I'm going to use the little striker just to prove you don't need to square the spine Can you see what I mean about low pressure? All them feather sticks and them slits are dry. They should go up like a rocket. Low pressure doesn't help. I may even have to give it a waft. I don't like doing that. I didn't need to give it a waft, it was fine. You see I'm using a crisscross fire which is definitely the best method when it's wet low pressure at this point now I could stack some wet stuff on top and by the time the flames get to it the smoke will dry them out Now I've laid the larger ones on each side, so I've got four each side, basically to stop that crisscross from just falling over, they're supporting it and when they burn down they come together and start a parallel fire lay. And if you know me, you know I like a parallel fire lay. Parallel fire lays, can't beat them, they're easy to turn into a crisscross if you need the flames to get back up. They're good to cook on because they're longer, you can get two pots on and they warm you a damn sight better than just a mess. And now for a cup of tea. 
and I've got my Chinese pot now something the Chinamen make okay is these pots now I've modified mine and there's a few other people on on YouTube including Simon Bloke in the woods he modified one as well and these are excellent pots for the money 13 pound and you get a stainless steel pot to Moore's design just a little bit smaller that's going on now with some water so there's the pot now the water bag I'm using is a platypus water bag and I think I've added 16 years I'm still going strong but if you want a cheaper alternative to a platypus water bag or somebody else's water bag just use a two litre pop bottle or one litre pop bottle whatever you know they're free just buy a bottle of pop and I am a big one for stainless steel bottles because if you're camping out in the winter nothing beats sleeping with a hot water bottle and a stainless steel bottle with a good screw cap filled with hot water is just great chances are your feet are going to be cold they may even be wet if your socks are wet just put the bottle in your socks leave them 10 minutes and your socks will be nice and dry well you'll see the steam coming off them anyway something i've done for years and it really works a treat you can buy a cheap one they sell them everywhere well that fire is really really warm i can feel it from here i'm getting a bit warm now and the sun's come out a little bit so that's a plus so i'm going to do quite a bit of wood prep now after tea with the cheap saw and the cheap bags well thankfully the rain has stopped great and i'm going to process some wood up now i'm going to use this back or saw now you may prefer a 24 inch but I've got this one which is a 21 and I've got a 30 and this one if you need to pack it in your rucksack for a weekend it will fit anything bigger won't you'll have to put it on the outside I think it can do with a new blade but I gotta be honest these are far more comfortable to use than the folding ones the handles are just so much better needs a new blade so I've cut three reasonably straight with only tiny little knots in them and the piece that's left is full of knots I'm gonna cut that in half for a future star fire Bit of split in. Bending it, oh shit, falling. 
bending the knees really helps, <laughs> it really does. Now I don't know if you could see, but that time when I brought the axe down, as soon as it hit, I twisted it. It's a bit a lot better. I don't often use that hit and twist, just in case it flies off, but it really does work well. Another little tip, when you're split in this way, don't put the axe there, put it there. It will split easier. I'm better. Apart from that time. <laughs> That's a nice little pile of split wood now for the next time. If the weather's good, I just take my kindling off the trees or off the ground. I know they say don't take it off the ground, but with spruce and pine and things, because of the shape, they tend to bunch up and they're not actually sitting in the dirt or in the water. Well, not the water, you know, you know what I mean. But when it's wet like this morning, you know, you got to do a bit of splitting and a bit of feathering. That's good practice anyway. Now I'm going to have another cup of tea. Well, I've replenished my split wood for my next fire. And now I'm going to replenish some feather sticks. Now these are probably the straightest ones out of it. Unfortunately, they are a bit short. For really good feather sticks. Really could do with about a foot. But these will have to do. I made the decision to get as much as I could out of that log. I split, I cut three down, where as if I wanted to make perfect feather sticks, I'd have probably cut two out of it. But hell, they're going up on fire anyway. Well, I'm going to split these down now with a knife, and because I've already used the Robust, I'm going to use the 510. And I'll probably use both to make feather sticks, just to show you how good these knives actually are. Unfortunately, I can't find the other button, so I'll have to use my bigger one. And I was using it two hours ago. Odd. Now this being only 2mm is not as good for splitting as the robust.
Well, that was pretty easy, considering a lot of people think this knife is weak, because it's not. It's a bloody good knife. I'm going to pick the best four out here now, and I'm going to feather them up. They're not that brilliant, but these are the best four. Now, usually, when you're making feather sticks, and you're using corning for wood, the best place to start is on the edge, the outer edge. But these are wet, so I'm not going to be able to go on the outer edge. But I'll do my best, Phil. That is the only thing with a mortar grind, it does tend to dig in, so that's more of a second stage feather stick really. See if I can get some tight curls with this one. That one's a bit better, using the tip. I won't be surprised if the grind is a bit steeper on the tip. When I'm looking at it, it looks a bit steeper. So yeah, fine curls use the tip. Let's see how the robust does. Now it still wants to dig in, but because the handle is a bit bigger, it's a lot more comfortable to use. The handle on 510 is really small and slim. You do get a bit of fatigue, especially when you're trying to make fine cuts and you're really holding on to it. Yeah, so this is a bit better. I just can't fault this knife. For the money, this knife is an absolute beauty. Now I know a lot of people prefer the companions, but I like a straight knife. I don't like that dip down on the handle. Nothing wrong with the companion, but I think for the money, that is the knife to get. And I do like a shorter blade. Well, I'm gonna crack on now, make another one. And then what I'm gonna do, just for the hell of it, I'm going to use this TBS rod and light to one of them. So that's the second one I just made, and that's a pretty good one. And yeah, I definitely think that the Robust is a better knife. So I'm going to light this now, and I'm going to do it the Mosco Hansky way, of putting your ferro rod on and lighting it without putting it on the floor, because it's wet and the floor is wet, and the ground is wet. I shouldn't say floor because I've been told that the Americans, when you say floor, think it's an internal floor, which makes perfect sense. And another thing, I just went to adjust my pot and the legs of my tripod weren't quite right because I was trying to dodge the rain and my pot fell over and the lid didn't come off. I lost very little water. So that modification I made by making the lid tighter is definitely worth doing or I would have lost all my water and I couldn't have my final cup of tea. Let's have a go light in this.
well you can see it's a bit damp Well, thank you very much for watching, I appreciate your views and please keep watching and if you haven't already subscribed, please do so because it really helps my channel. I know it's a bit of a pain when you've got like a hundred subscriptions and you think, shall I put another one on? But please do, because it helps. Until the next time, bye bye. Ah. Do like lightning fires. I'm drinking tea, and that's what I'm going to do next. Remember that thumbs up. Well, I remember, this will go on the end. Obviously, I like talking about it alone, because I love the show. I won't spoil anything if you're watching this in the UK and you haven't seen it yet and you're not going to see it for a few months Chris the hippie guy has got a cold steel SRK great knife highly rate them you know that I love them I think they're great real good survival utility knife but it was blunt he was trying to cut stuff and I could just see how blunt the knife was well man do you really trust somebody who can't even take a sharp knife on the biggest survival exercise they're ever going to do in their life no, absolutely ridiculous. It was right early on, and he's using the SRK, and I can see the edge on it, and he's struggling to cut wood. Hmm, not impressed with that at all. Little off topic, so I'm going to put this on at the end. When I got here, my legs were soaking from the middle of my thighs down. Obviously, walking through loads of foliage and stuff, and it was soaking wet. So they were wet. About five minutes after lighting the fire, they were dry. So I just want to say how much I appreciate these trousers. These, um, what are they? Helicontex Woodsman trousers, and the same with um, the Pilgrim trousers. They dry really quick. They're tough, they dry quick. They're great trousers. And I remember a few years back going for a camp out, and uh, three of us went and I had a pair of Fall Ravens on and one of the boys had a pair of Dickies Eisenhower work trousers which are great work trousers and we got soaked walking through the grass and everything to get to camp basically lit the fire I was dry in no time the Dickies stayed wet Ba-ting. so I do think it's worth investing in a decent pair of woods trousers for camping and things do what you want when you go and walk in. Obviously, don't wear jeans. That's bloody stupid. And I've worn jeans in the woods for years, especially in the summer. Never bothered me. But I am in my old age now. I do lean towards having a decent pair of trousers, and I can't say enough good things about these Helicontex ones. It was a bit off topic, but I thought I'd share it with you. Well, I've what the fuck. Start again. Don't you just hate packing your shit up in the rain? I can't stand it. But there are, it's a part of it, isn't it? It's not too bad when you get there, you just do everything quick. But I can put this tarp down, it's going to be soaking. <sighs> that 